It's time for uh, today's perspective on the programme. And living here in Paris, one of the things that people still talk about is the canicule. That's the heat wave of the summer of 2003. Now, here, 15,000 extra deaths were recorded that year, partly as holidaying families left their elderly relatives in Paris just not knowing how they were suffering amid the heat. Temperatures here reached 39.5 Celsius at their peak. In Chicago, though, well, a heat wave back in 1994 saw temperatures there hit over 41 degrees Celsius. The so-called heat index, which measures how temperature actually feels on the body, that reached a massive 52. What on earth does that actually mean for people living in it? Well, my guest today is Professor of uh, Social Science and Director of the Institute for Public Knowledge at New York University. His latest book, Heat Wave, A Social Autopsy of Disaster in Chicago, has just been translated and released here in France. I got the French copy. That's the English copy. Eric Kleinenberg uh, joins us here on set. Thanks very much for being with very us. Very nice to be here today. What does that mean, um, first of all, for, for a human being to be living in that kind of temperature? I and mean, what does it actually do to the human body, if you like? Well, we're not really designed to cope with heat that's so severe for such a long period of time. And what happens to our bodies is they begin to be overwhelmed. Uh, our defenses break down. So when a person is exposed to too much heat for too long, uh, you begin to see organs fail. Uh, unfortunately, people don't always recognize that they're getting very sick. And so what's crucial and sociologically important is that you often need another person to say, there's something wrong and we need to get you help. Heat tends to harvest people who are living alone and isolated, and so it's the combination of the weather and society that makes these events so dangerous. Yeah, I mean, that was the problem here in Paris, wasn't it? The, in the summer holidays, Paris empties because uh, a lot of people go off on their holidays, particularly to the South Coast, leaving elderly people particularly behind who are most susceptible, presumably. And, and I don't uh, think that's a moral issue, really. We have built... Uh, a kind of system of culture where we do things based on our expectation of the way the world works, the way the climate works. And it has always been okay to leave your elderly relatives behind. Now we live fundamentally on a different planet. It's a hotter planet. It's a more dangerous planet. And we have to start changing the way we behave. And what's so interesting about this heat wave in Chicago, it's not that it killed that many people. We're now used to a world where 700 people die in a couple of days from a disaster. It's that it was an early sign for all of us that we should be paying attention to the heat and we should pay attention to our social vulnerabilities. We ignored it in 1995. France had the canicule of 2003. Now the question is what's next for us? And what do you think is next for us? Then? Uh, hot, hotter times for sure. Uh, and it's that combination of the heat with social inequality, uh, with concentrated poverty, with isolation. This is the kind of thing we need to look out for. And when I look at the way the world talks about climate change, unfortunately, I think sometimes we forget how connected it is to these underlying problems of the way we live in cities, the way we support or fail to support each other. Uh, we can't simply press a button and have these problems go away. So I think it's now time for us to really face the, the probability that we will have heat waves much more severe than this one. Are there ways out of it? I mean, just um, uh, thinking I was in Singapore a few years ago, for example, when uh, basically in the middle of the summer, everybody is living inside. I mean, presumably there's going to be an awful lot more of that in the future, for example. So one problem is if we just get inside by turning on our air conditioners, given the technology we have right now, we're just making the world hotter. So yes, there are solutions, but the solutions involve things like shifting to renewable energy, uh, which is of course important because you can't adapt to a world where it's far too hot. Uh, solutions that you see in cities around the world involve building places that can absorb heat more effectively. That means much more green space, uh, more parks, more tree cover. The, I thought what you would say in Asia is there are all these incredible high-rise buildings that have tree canopies and little yeah. forests in the sky. We have to find some way to, to cool down our cities especially. Cities are heat islands. They get hot during the day because all of the steel and concrete absorb the heat and pollution traps the heat. So what makes cities so dangerous is that at night, you don't get natural cooling. And so it's time for cities around the world to take heat seriously. What, what's amazing is the death rate in Chicago was actually the same as the death rate in France, mm. uh, but the heat in Chicago lasted two days. So you have to ask yourself, if you live in a place like an American city, 
What happens when the three-week heat wave comes? Yeah. I mean, we could be talking about massive fatalities. And it's not um, just the human body that's affected, obviously. It's infrastructure as well, and that infrastructure being affected could then affect humans as well to, to enormous degree. I, I think there are very few people on Earth today who know reliably that in an extreme heat wave, the power will work, public transit will work, uh, the, the water system will work. We see core infrastructure systems fail around the world because we built our infrastructure for the 19th or the 20th century and we desperately need to make investments you know not just in new hard infrastructure systems but one of the things i write about in the book is social infrastructure the physical places the way that neighborhoods shape our interactions so if you live in a place that supports public life, bringing people together in public spaces, and France is actually fairly good at this in most places, you're much less likely to have a neighbor die alone. Whereas if you live in a place where everyone hunkers down in their apartments and private life rules, you really run a high risk of isolation. And the danger of this time is that if we get more isolated, it's harder to solve these public problems, whether it's COVID uh, or a canicule. Who needs to change? And is it, you're talking here about individuals, but presumably politicians and the way that we elect people and, and what they're going to do to try and avoid some of these problems that, that we're talking about is crucial as well. Yes, I, th I think the heat wave is so interesting because it's a total social breakdown. Most people stop and say, it's about the family. You know, you need to call your elderly relatives or knock on their door. And, and I agree with that, it's true, but this is not a problem that an individual or an individual family can solve. We're talking first about changing energy systems to keep the planet cool, and that's an international diplomatic problem. And then we're talking about countries investing in hard infrastructure and social infrastructure uh, that will allow our systems to work when we need them most, regardless of what the threat is, whether it's a, a flood or a heat wave or a hurricane, and we desperately need that. And, and then I think we're also talking about you know, social infrastructure. What kinds of things can we do to help people support each other, be present for one another, because a lot of trends in the world uh, make us more individualized, more separated, more isolated. Obviously, during this pandemic, a lot of us have been feeling this sense of being away from each other. We're just now getting back into the television studio. Mm. So we need to think about what it means to have a more connective and mutually supportive world as well. It's not just the weather, it's society too. Eric, good to talk to you today. Thanks very much for coming in. To Thank you so much. Uh, Eric Kleinenberg, who's uh, a uh, professor of social science at the uh, director of the Institute for Public Knowledge at New York University. That's the book in French, but you can find it in uh, English as well. Thanks again. If you're just tuning in,